He had an empty tomb first day of the week. But oh no. Hope was just beginning. Hope was just coming to fruition. Hope was just beginning to advance. I don't know what kind of week you had. I had an interest. Insult in the Middle East years ago was may you live interesting times. Yet, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. Whatever your faith. And if you've tried to live life on your own, apart from the grace of God in Christ, and you're discovering you can't do that. There's good news. It may seem strange to you. We're going to take a brief departure from 1 Corinthians 15, which is the quintessential chapter on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Scripture. And we're going to come to Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Why resurrection Christ matters. And God willing, we will plow back into 1 Corinthians. 13. So this has been sort of a season. Meditations, contemplation, resurrection. That bores you. Talk to me afterwards. First, Romans 1, verses 1 to 6. If you stand with me. This is the op opening words of Paul's letter to the church at Rome. He hadn't been there. That's why you have these many chapters that really tell us the best idea what Paul did when he went to a city to plant a church there. Paul's church plant approach writing. Paul, servant of Jesus, of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and who was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong Christ. What have we just read together? We've read together the inerrant, infallible, all sufficient. My hope today is that as we said to you before, every 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 time we get resurrect, we gather. That's the day of the week Christ came out of the tomb. Yet I'm aware that today there's a heightened emphasis. Just as if you had a, a loved one who had died, there would be things along the, during the year where you would remember that person in different ways, but there would, there would come the anniversary of death. You might think a little more deep. See, not the day and the date on the calendar, but the time. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world says, I want to especially remember the tomb of Jesus Christ. May we May that fill our hearts today. Thank you, please. Now, when he, when he opens up this, this letter, he introduces himself. Called to be, he's summoned to be an apostle. The word apostle, remember, apostolos. I mean, sent one. He, he could say, I'm called to be a missionary. Though he has a special designation, encountered the risen. He's been sent. Sent for the gospel of God, Christ Jesus. The gospel that had been promised. It's a gospel whose focus is on a person. And he tells us here in these opening verses that concerning his son, he talks about the humanity of Jesus and then the deity of Jesus. 
So he says about his humanity, who was descended from David according to the flesh. So he's a, he's a descendant of David. He, he's the one. David was promised that your throne will be an everlasting. There will always be a descendant of yours to sit on your throne. He goes on, this is where I want us to focus this morning. And was declared, that word there, declared, is our word, we get our word horizon. In other words, he was marked out in such a definite, distinguishable boundary that when you have a good view, sometimes in, in, in Oklahoma, you get incredible sunset. If you're in the right spot, you see See the sun as it begins to dip. Very distinct. There's nothing fuzzy about it. He was declared clearly, infallibly, unmistakably for anyone who will stop and consider and gaze upon the reality. We sang earlier, come behold the wondrous mystery. John says in his gospel, prologue of John's gospel, and we beheld his glory. It's a, it's a word that says we gazed upon. We studied intensely. We gave our energies and our attention and our fascination to it. It wasn't just a casual glance. Behold, reality of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And you cannot help but agree with God. He is declared to be the Son of God in power. Think about it. Jesus' whole life was one of power. He, he, not, he hadn't soon burst on the scene in his ministry. Goes to a wedding. Run out of wine. Transforms the situation from a huge embarrassment to a remarkable celebration. That's just his whole ministry. Paul here digging down. In power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, if you know people who want to defeat the idea that Jesus is the Son of God, if they want to defeat the gospel, then all they have to do is go and show that the resurrection is a hoax. This is the event. This is the infallible, undeniable, unassailable, really, reality. It sets everything apart. It is true that, that the cross changes everything. It is also true that the resurrection changes everything. This resurrection from the dead. And, and when Paul has said this, opening up Romans, he, then de he declares him, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus, of course, that's the Greek equivalent of the, of the Old Testament name, the, the Jewish name. He was a Jew, and, and had we, uh, Karen and I have had some interesting encounters in days, two or three people of Jewish backgrounds, two of them who were, who were Christians, who had come to faith in Christ. And in talking with them, having conversations, they speak about Yeshua. Son of God, he would recognize by them Yeshua ben Yahweh. Declared to be Jesus, he's Christ. The Greek, the New Testament equivalent of the Old Testament, Messias, Messiah. He is Yeshua. Messiah. He had ascended. Early Christians were advancing the gospel. They were going very perilous times. So they had two ways of greeting one another. If, if they came upon a situation with another person and they thought that person might be a believer, they weren't sure, and they would stand talking and they would draw what you and I would look sort of a broad semicircle in the sand. Just stand there and just... 
they were talking to a believer, then the believer would fill it in. The person would draw the other part of the signature. And they knew they were talking. If they knew one another, if they knew one another, and here's how they greeted one another. He is risen. The person would respond, he is risen. In Let's say together. He is risen. What a great way to meet one another in the world. Think, you could be low as a snake's belly. You come up on one of your brothers or sisters. He is risen. You know, what, you, it just draws it out of you. Reality. Of it. So, so what I want us to do. A few minutes we have today. I just want to cite some and answer the question: Why the resurrection of Jesus? First of all, by rising from the dead, Jesus becomes identified as the promised King of David, ruling over creation. That's what we see in our text in Romans. If he's the king of David, and David is long gone, and there's been, there's been a, a, a gap, considerable time, where there's not been a son of David to sit on David's throne, then he comes in answer to the promise in Isaiah 11, when, when Peter cites something about this in Acts 2, 33 to 36, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, talking about Jesus having, having died, raised from grave ascended on high and having received from the father the promise of the holy spirit he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing what you're seeing is the is the response of jesus coronation in heaven he has given the holy spirit as he promised john's gospel it's necessary for me to go away when i go away i will send the comforter to you for david did not ascend into the heaven but he himself says citing one of david's psalms the lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. The only way that is possible, Jesus cites this when he's encountering the Pharisee. How can he be both David's Lord, David be? How can he be the son of David and David's Lord? There's only one way. It comes from heaven, ascended from the fully God, fully man. And so, in the resurrection, we have this. Peter says, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him Lord in Christ. Also, by rising from the dead, Jesus inaugurates the new creation promised by the prophets. When you, when you read in Ezekiel 37 in the Valley of the Dry Bones, he takes Ezekiel over this on the edge of the precipice and looks down and it's a, it's a valley where there had been a great battle and, and the remains, the birds had come and picked clean. Thieves had taken the armor. The birds had taken the flesh. All that's left is bone. Probably scattered. Maybe, maybe some complete skeletons, but not many. God asked the prophet Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones He says, okay, Son of man, speak to the bones, call for the wind. Reach to the bones, pray for the power. Of course, you know the miracle that took bone upon in you. And a great army. The picture of what happened in the new covenant, God brings dead. Jesus inaugurates this new creation. He comes out of the tomb, the firstborn. Firstborn. Third, by rising from the dead, Jesus establishes himself as the end time judge of the world. Who could judge the world at the end? If, if God is going to follow the pattern he does in the incarnation where he sends one among us to be one of us, then at the end, to judge the world, he will have one who is like us, who in all ways has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. 
resurrection Jesus shows he is that end time judge. Acts 17, 30 and 31, Paul preaching on Mars Hill says, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Now, if you just heard that, you have not repented of your sin and come to trust in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. God's talking to all people everywhere. Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. You see, there's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who is now in heavenly session, fully God, fully man. This he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. You see, he will judge the world by a man. And he's declared who he is by raising him from the dead. Fourth, by rising from the dead, Jesus asserts himself as the last Adam. We just studied this in 1 Corinthians 15, 21, and 22. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. And he goes on and says, He did what the first Adam was commanded to do. He did what you and I have been commanded to do. Okay. It is to live a perfect life of sin. Perfectly obeying the law of God. Perfectly shunning and in word, thought. Search himself. Last Adam. Also in Christ. Live, the resurrection is tied to Christ's resurrection. By rising from the dead, Jesus accomplishes our spiritual birth, resurrection. See, rising from the dead himself, he has conquered every enemy by faith. Sin, death, hell, grave. See, before you and I were converted, we had to sin. We couldn't do anything but sin. Our very, our very best approaches and attempts were what the Puritans called glorious sin. Save. Don't live perfect lives. Don't have to. Jesus has broken power, canceled sin, reigning sin. That's the capture. What avails? He accomplishes our spirit. When he cries out from the cross, tetelestai, it is finished, it has been, and stands accomplished. He has paid it all. All to him we will. Our sin had left a crimson stain. He, by his sin, makes that clear in Ephesians 2. It says at the beginning of chapter 2 dead in trespass, he has quickened you, he's made you alive. See, his resurrection is, is the enabling of regeneration of the new birth. The only one who can give the new birth, the one who was born, faced death, conquered it, came through. He has rendered every enemy you and I have harmless. You've got to remember that. We watched the Pilgrim's Progress movie yesterday. It was Scene in there where her pilgrim going into beautiful palace approaches and there's these two lions. They just move upon him. It looks like they're going to devour him and terrified and steps out the door and says, Come, come quickly. So he just begins to run through and discovers their own chain. They can go so far. We have a Savior who conquered enemies.
6, by rising from the dead, Jesus accomplishes our justification. Romans 4, 23 to 25 says this, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord. Faith, not in a good moral man, not in a great teacher, faith in a crucified and risen Son of God who was delivered up, verse 25, for our trespasses, our sins. Put him on the cross. Sin. Took himself, our sins. He satisfied God's divine justice by his suffering, dying in our place. He was, he was crucified for our sins and raised for our justifications. Fascinating what takes preposition. Our sins put him on the tree. His resurrection places us in a position of justification. Justification, that glorious reality in change of relationship with God. We were no longer regarded as sinners, accepted as righteous in his sight, not for anything we have done or initiated, simply for the sake of all that Jesus Christ has done. And then that imputed to us, that counted to us, that placed on our account. You and I, some of you still here, here still have a great debt to God. That debt is weighing you down. And if you do not Turn to the Lord to do something about it. It will weight you all the way down to hell and you will pay eternally for that debt. Yet Jesus come. Blood. Stamps on our debt to be paid in full. How can I be sure? The empty tomb. Do you have any question about whether or not God has accepted his payment? Look at the empty tomb. He's accepted it in full. He was raised so that we could be justified. Seven. By rising from the dead, Jesus is authorized to give us the Holy Spirit. He said, it's necessary that I go away. He could not give the Holy Spirit while he was still here. It's necessary that I go away. And as surely as I go away, I will send the Comforter. I will send him. The Father sent the Son. The Father and Son sent the Spirit. Father, Son, and Spirit in saving us send us. The whole process is sending process. And then as we go and share and disciple and make disciples, guess what we're doing? Then, then the Father, the Son, and the Spirit and the redeemed Missionary is participating in the sending mission of God. Jesus' resurrection. That was his going away. Went to the cross. Came out of the tomb. Prepared to us. Resurrection. Gave authority. Us to receive. John 7, 39. Now this he said about the Spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Cross, resurrection, ascension. Acts 2, 32. This Jesus God raised up and of that we are all with. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing. The downpour, the invasion of the Spirit at Pentecost. Eight, arising from the dead, Jesus frees us from our slavery to sin, death, and the devil. Romans 6, 1 to 11, you ought to read that sometime. And it talks about how we've died. We died to sin. In Jesus' death, uh, we were buried. Delivered from 
We're going to get to that in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. Believe me, brothers and sisters, we will, unless Jesus comes back first, and then it won't matter because we'll listen to him. But if Jesus doesn't come back, we're going to get to 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58, where, he's, where he begins to mock death. Where's your sting grave? Where's your victory? The strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory. Horrible enemy. Jesus took captive. That's the beauty. Things that would capt captivate us, the devil would captive us and drag us down to hell. Death would, would finish us off. The grave would, would look so terminal. Jesus has taken captive all of that. It all belongs to him. So think about sin. You're not a slave to sin anymore. Now, if you're acting like a slave to sin, repent. Repent. Read from that. Run back to the enemy of our souls and say, what do you want to do? Slave to sin. Were. Correction. Conquered that. All of those who. Ninth. By rising from the dead, Jesus ensures that we will have resurrection bodies. See, the resurrection could have been a whole mystical thing. In fact, I, I've discussed with liberal professors in the past. They say, well, it's, it's not important that whether or not he actually physically came out of the grave. It's that they went from the tomb with the feeling in their heart that he had risen. Nonsense. came bodily out of the tomb. That fact, that reality is hope that we too, we too will have resurrection bodies. Now there's some mystery attached to it. It does not yet appear what we shall be like. But we know this, John says in 1 John, when we see him, we shall be like him. Or we will see him as he is. Take on, and Paul says in that passage again in 1 Corinthians 15, we shall not all sleep. We will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Paul says this corruptible, that is this decaying body. I noticed the other day my skin's getting really, really flaky. It's like falling apart. This tabernacle that is wasting, this corruptible was put on incorruption. This mortal, I'm dying, was put on immortality. And when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is death swallowed up, resurrection, resurrection. Philippians 3, 20 to 21, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to us. Finally, because I know you're wondering, how much God I want. By rising from the dead, Jesus guarantees that God one day transforms. Coming out of decay, death. You and I look at things right now, folks, and as Brother Norman said earlier, it is just. Culture with so much spurning. You and I live in a day. Be discouraged. Don't be utterly despairing. We say greatest honor. Because it's getting darker. You ever shopped for any diamonds? Wife. 
look at them in the case. Bueller knows what he's doing. Takes out a little black. Diamond. Good diamond. That's just not sparkling, ladies. Has to see. Talk about the fire. The fire. In it's getting darker and darker. Our gospel shines brighter. All of creation will be. But what you and I are seeing, by the way, is Romans 8. It is groaning. The whole creation is groaning under the burden. Waiting final redemption. Darker closer. Dawn. Oh, brothers and sisters. Resurrection. This is just this is just resurrection means so much. We have so much in Christ because he rose. If if he'd have done everything we saw him do, we read about him healing, giving sight to the blind, giving Hearing to the deaf, giving the ability to walk to the lame, bringing the, the dead, resuscitating them back to life. If he'd have done all that, feeding thousands of people miraculously, calming a storm. If we'd have seen all of that and he had died on the cross and that was it, it would have been just one incredible life. But he rose. He rose. Because of that. Every. Because of that, your darkest hour has hope just beyond the edge. I pray you know him today. I pray you're living in him like this. Not. Come to Christ. Run to him in your heart. Oh, Jesus. I need you. Have mercy on me. Know him. I'm going to meet some people today, I have no doubt, who don't know him. Tell the good news. Be ready to give anyone an answer when they ask you why, how do you hope in such times? Let me tell you about it. End of the story. I'm going to start at the end. Do that because it. Why that's good news. Your holy Father, you're the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving us Savior. Thank you for crushing him at the cross. Though, though it, it overwhelms us, I think. Our Savior. Thank you so much. Oh, Lord, thank you for not letting him stay in the day. Thank you for bringing him out, conquering every and ensuring there is a path that we can follow by grace and faith that will take us from city of destruction, celestial, where he dwells. Mercy on Deal with us according to our needs, I pray. Stand with me, if you will, as we sing.